Five years ago, I met a guy named Andrew at a farm to table dinner. And today we are at his farm, which he manages all by himself while working 35 hours a week and grossing over six figures a year. I see him over there. You're gonna love this tour. Let's go find him. What's going on, man? <laughs> hey, what's up? <laughs> Snuck up on me there. I know, I know. What are you up to, cultivating? Yeah, just getting yeah. the cultivation going. Dude, this place it looks amazing. I appreciate it. It really man. does. Thanks. What is it, like an acre, a little over? A little over an acre. Yeah. Yeah. And it's but all you. All me, all me out of here. 165, 50 foot beds. That's crazy. Yeah. That is crazy. I still can't believe yeah. that you do it all yourself. Like it's it's bizarre. It's bonkers to me because <laughs> you, you look this far and damn, I mean, it keeps on going. It's out there. So let's just go right here, talk about classic bed prep and yep. how does it all work? Yeah, so my standard bed, um, as you can see here, I stake them out at 30 inch wide. Which is the market garden Which is standard. the market garden, 18 inch centers. Yep. You know, so it gives us plenty to go down a wheelbarrow with, whatever. And then uh, pretty much everything's super intensive, so nothing ever goes empty. Lettuce row here. Classic lettuce row. These are those cut and come agains, yeah, you know? Yeah. Which is beautiful. This is actually gonna be harvested for the these market this weekend. These are picture perfect right now. Yeah. How are, you, how are you harvesting these guys by yourself? All by hand. So you're just using a knife and just- One knife, <laughs> cut and come again. Especially with the head lettuces, I just like to, I mean, I can burn through this thing and, yeah. and then they all just cut super clean, ready to rock and roll. Yeah. Um, behind us, we have some overwintered carrots that are starting to explode. Uh, let's see, we put these guys in. These are a little later, yeah. so I put these in in November. Okay. Yeah, so these are littler guys, you know. Nice shape on this. Yeah, these are those yeah. mochums. Oops. So these <laughs> <laughs> Snapped. Yeah, super, super give it that sweet, bite test, you super know? sweet, got the crunch. Um, Ooh, that's nice. Yeah, that's yeah nice. the mochums are really nice, and they're super fast, 55 days. Mm -hmm. So that's why I like them. And then they, you know, and the thing I like about them too is you could actually harvest them these pencil size. So, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of carrots, they'll take a lot of time to get the size, size and then they'll get yeah. funky. And, but these, I feel like just, a chef might like that or maybe just a, you know, home, home cook might like it's a different shape. Exactly. Kind of nice. You don't have to peel them, you don't have to do anything with mm -hmm. them. So, talk to me about the land. Like when you got here, what mm -hmm. did you have to do? Because, it's been you the whole time, right? No one else. Been me the whole time, yeah. yeah. So you, like, when you first came here, you did all these rows. I built, started building them all. Really? By hand. Okay. So you didn't like expand over the years type thing. You're just like, boom, I'm in. Mm, no. You, yeah. No, I did expand A over the years. Yeah. Okay, got it. Got so it. like, I did like 20 rows one week, 20 rows the next week, and then second year I started coming down this back side here, mm -hmm. and then third year I opened up a 20 more rows in that back. Wow. So yeah, year by year I just kind of keep adding little chunks here, trying to really utilize my space here as much as I can. What did you do for soil uh, amendments, et cetera, when you started out? Um, I used a lot of mineral dust in the very beginning. Yeah. Composted the crap out of everything because this soil here, um, not in this particular area, this is pretty good, but more towards the hoops is a really, really drained out rocky area. So I had to really load up compost. Really? Yeah. Um, so I used 30 yards roughly every year. Okay. Um, every bed flip, if it gets emptied, gets a whole new compost layer, about an inch layer on there. Every single time. Every single yeah. time. Okay. You know, so it gets composted maybe, you know, twice, three times a year. So is that your biggest input besides perhaps seed, I guess, is compost then, or maybe water? Water and yeah. compost, yeah. yeah. So, and then I use a true organics uh, pelleted fertilizer as well. Okay. Which yeah. is a 757, yeah. just a nice all purpose. Uh, Slow release. Yeah. I want to know like routine, you know, because you're telling me you do it all yourself, which is sort of unbelievable, honestly, mm -hmm. even though I know it's true. <laughs> um, but not only that, but you're doing it at maybe 35, 40 hours a week. Yep. So like About less, <laughs> honestly, less than almost everyone's office job, you know? For sure. For which sure. is crazy to me. Yeah. So uh, like these beds right behind you, for instance, <laughs> had broccoli in it two weeks ago. It was yep. overwintered broccoli. You know, I cut them down to the surface, let the roots go in. Mm -hmm. I laid her compost on, I put tarp on for a week. Boom, after that tarp was on, I, I undid it, yeah. raked it out, and then I literally just direct seeded straight into it, put the tarp white side up, yeah. two days later, we're here. Are you starting and transplanting anything or are you direct sowing yeah, everything? Yeah, yeah. Um, so like I direct sow arugula and mescaline, carrots, beets. Anything you can, right? I would imagine you would prefer to direct sow. Right? Yeah, I have yeah. a small greenhouse at my house. Okay. You know, a little 10 by 20. Yeah. So I can't, you know, I would love to transplant beets and things like that. I just don't have the space yeah, to do it. Yeah, sure. So I direct yeah. seed those things. But things like these tomato starts, mm -hmm. I started all these guys, you know, and then I upplanted them, you know. So these these are actually uh, from uh, Brad Gates. 
Oh no way! I've got wild okay. boar farms. What, so what, what variety? Afternoon delight. Okay, I'm growing that Is one. the purple? See that purple yeah. guy? Are you doing like a Florida weave on this then? Just a. No, no. This is kind of like a. I don't know. The guys in the Monterey taught me this little yeah. this little system. I just pretty much tie one in. Yeah. Loop it, and then I'll have six different string or five different strings, and then I come in. Yeah. And I just. You just do oh I oh do, that's interesting. It's this nice little tie. You do this little sandwich off mm -hmm. right here to so keep it nice and taut. Yeah. And then these taut. And, and then you'll just go up every six inches, every eight six inches, inches, and you just do another. Yep. That's like a, di all yeah, the way a bit different, huh? This is actually an example of a row. Sure. That was an old mescaline. I tarped it, composted it, roots are still decaying in yeah, there. Yeah, so you're not and ripping then I out. Stick yeah. tomatoes straight back in there. So this stuff's alive. They go, they go pretty quick. You know, yeah. if you rub your hands on that, they they're, they're just gone. gone. Yeah. They're in there and that's just back carbon. Into the soil. That's yep. carbon. Totally. And so that's kind of another, you know, I don't look at it as necessarily a cover cropping system, but it definitely does add. It kind of is. Yeah. Because I mean, every week they're going straight back into the ground. You're taking you know? the top two thirds of plant matter and selling it off. And mm -hmm. then the bottom one third, you're just letting go yep. and, and build. And a lot of right? time I'll let it do a little growth again and then I'll drop it and yeah. let it sit. How many seasons have you turned here? Six or seven, probably. Oh, Especially shoot. with the direct seeded stuff. Really? I'm constantly, every every single week, I seed arugula, salad, and mescaline. Yeah. Every single week. Have you seen your need for uh, inputs go down, like compost go down at all? As, as Not it's yet. Time? Not yet. Certain rows, definitely. Yeah. But yeah. like the heavier turned rows, perhaps. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Mm -hmm. More more input on them. Mm -hmm. um, but certain areas, like up in that far side, yeah. definitely just gonna have to keep on it. I think eventually, for sure, we'll be able to back off. You know, if you're a market farmer and you're trying to buy in inputs, yep. obviously you're using SPV soils, but quality-wise, like, what are you looking for? Quality-wise, I always ask the testing of uh, carbon to nitrogen, or carbon to nitrogen ratio. Yeah. So that CN ratio is crucial. Yeah. Um, do you care about, like, an NPK count on it, or not really? No. Yeah. No. I do care about the diversity, yeah. you know? So, like, this one, yeah, so, like, I know SPV uses a lot more manure based, cow based. Mm -hmm. So like probably next year I'll go with the chicken farmer up here and do more of a chicken compost base. Oh, so you'll switch your supplier I'll based on input if yeah. you can't get it from one place. Yeah. That or and just to uh, create more of that diversity. Yeah, sure. You know, instead of just loading in a bunch of phosphorus, phosphorus, phosphorus. We've been using them for all of our raised bed stuff too. Yeah. Like all the all the in-ground compost in the backyard. Yeah. Like my version of this market farm, which is <laughs> certainly not on the same scale, but yeah. Yeah. Dude, um, so these are those Chandlers I was telling you about. These Whoa. are second year Chandlers. Ooh. Oops, sorry. But yeah, dude, these things are going crazy. These are Chandlers. These were super popular in Monterey. Wow. Yeah, these things are just going off, you know? That's like classic. Yeah. Mm. These are cool. I honestly saved these initially just for myself because I was like, I just love this fine texture, mm -hmm. you know, the super sweet. Nice shape. Shape. Yeah. They don't have great shelf life though. Mm. So for a market berry, it's tough. not too good. It's tough. You know, yeah. I'll harvest them Friday, take them to market Saturday. And they're starting to go. Really? Mm -hmm. Okay. So unless you're doing like farm stand straight out. Maybe this is like a U-pick berry then, right? Or a U-pick berry. Bring them here. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, okay, where should we go next? <laughs> and then uh, let's see. What we got? We could talk covers. You got the shade cover over here I want to talk about. Yeah. So yeah. these guys, it's just the next succession of a lettuce planting that we just kind of went over in that other area. Are you always shading it in the first like week or so? or? Anything 75 and above, yeah. I'll go ahead and shade it all out to, for two weeks. Two weeks. Yeah. Two weeks. Let it establish. Yep. Yeah. And then uh, I'll let it uncover. I'll uncover it for a night. Uh, Do you have like a particular shade that you like? This looks like kind 40, of a light shade. 40 percent. Yeah. I did do 30 percent, but out here in Monterey, or not Monterey, out here in Ramona, um, I think the sun's a little bit more intense up here with the little elevation. Yeah. Tense heat. Yeah, dude, it's it's not really up. We it's, get hot. It's we hot get and cold, cold though. Get, yeah, that's the thing. It's hot, hot and it's cold. We get cold and we get super windy. Where I'm at, it's like we're at like 45-ish lows and maybe we'll touch 100. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. You know, so I'm sure yours is what are you like 25 to 110 or something like that. Pretty right? much. Yeah. Yeah. When are you using this bed prep method where you're sort of plopping? You know what, like silage tarp or something on top. This in particular, I'm using because you see that mint. Yeah. <laughs> uh, sure. Yeah. Um, that mint was coming in on all the rows, and so I'm using these guys more or less a a barrier. Mm. So mm. these are gonna kill off that mint right here. Yep. And then not go anymore. What are you um, gonna throw on these? I'm trying to get some damn summer squash in here, but Spacing with this. Spacing looks like a big plant, yeah. Yeah, 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 we'll have big, you know, every 18 inches or so. And then I got cucumbers popping in here. Mm -hmm. 
Oh, there they are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and they're starting to pop, but earwigs in this time of year are nasty. So we do a lot of replanting, mm -hmm. but the, this stuff's going crazy. That's popping off. Yeah. And then I got to clear this out and then uh, put something else there. Yeah, yeah, because this, this is a bed. This is a bed. Right, it's or, just a... or was for a while. <laughs> exactly, just overtaken. Then yeah. I got some baby eggplants in this going on. Nice. Um, and here's going to be, pick some more lettuce heads. So these are that. little gem lettuces yeah. back here. So these were all planted on Monday. So you're just um, using a very simple, just hooping. Hoop yeah, and shade. pretty much. Hoop and shade the same them up. Yeah, <laughs> The trick is you got to get them big enough so the you know the hoops are about five feet so they get nice. Yeah. This so is they a pretty actually cool cover crop. over. This nice spinach crop coming in. Well, yeah, that's, that is nice. Um, you have the variety on this. That is a regiment. It's looking good. So these two are beds were experiments that mm -hmm. I just kind of pushed. I was using this little section you can see I shade out early here, and so I was kind of using that as my cue over here and. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm hoping to push them to end of June. Yeah, with that tree and that cover right there, mm -hmm. feels like it makes sense, huh? Mm-hmm. It's just one of those like tiny little farmer things that you'd think about, exactly. right? Like, oh, there's that tree. Yeah, there's a tree right there. Okay, the sun's you know, that put some cold love in there. <laughs> totally a farmer thing to think about. Let's check out down here, man, because this yeah. is like almost none of the farm. We've yeah, seen. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We've seen a block. Yeah. One block of the farm. How do you keep track of everything? Just all in your head, or you got like mm. journals and notes and stuff? I got journals. Yeah. I got planning journals, things like that. I mean, the direct seeded stuff's so easy that it's every week, so it's all, yeah. my, you know, that stuff I keep out. But I keep on track of all of my uh, broccoli plantings, my pepper plantings, all that, making sure I'm getting adequate amounts. Yeah. Um, Is this just Salanova here? Another Salanova. Yeah. You know, so. One of the most expensive lettuce seeds out there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's going Isn't crazy. It still is, right? Oh my gosh. Yeah. So I actually. This is actually a cool one from you. So Vitalis. Yeah. Remember that one time you went to Vitalis Seeds? Yeah. Did those one cuts and I asked you. Boom. There they are. Oh, really? Yeah. These no are way. easy. These are easy okay. cuts. These nice. aren't the sal Salanovas. So I went with the uh, because of the money. Mm -hmm. um, and these are performing just as good. Seems and like the, the market texture. garden crowd made the Salanovas just too expensive. You know? So insane. You know? And there's so many varieties coming out every year that there's got to be something, right? That works. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And you'll find it. And I found them and they're here. These ones are cool. These are green garlics that we're pulling in. Oh, you're going green. Yeah. So this little half row, I did green garlics, and yeah. then we did some regular onions here. So I just kind of keep mowing it down. And so you're just gonna chop them, and and sell them for the tops, then? Yeah. Yeah. So I just yank them. Yeah. I yank them, and we use them for the bases. This is what I I say, like, cause we are my garlic just got hit by rust like crazy. Yeah. Uh, and I'm like, ah, oh, it's just green garlic. That's why I grew it. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Make up an excuse. Yeah. Let's cut the top off. You know. Yeah. Yeah, mine are starting to burn a bit because uh, they are actually going to start bulbing here in the next month. Yeah. So they'll start dying back. I mean, you can tell they're already starting exactly. to go, starting exactly. to separate. Yeah. Smells. Green garlic's my favorite thing. And this variety here, I've saved and and I've grown and saved the seed for seven years now. It came from wow. me with Monterey, and I brought it down, and I've just been slowly adapting it to my climates. Yeah. Um, because it's the only soft neck variety that I've found that works down here. Really? Yeah. Interesting. And so. What's the variety name? It's just or an early Italian. Yeah. Um, but, but now seven years now, it's it's sort of your variety. Exactly. Honestly. Now yeah. it's you know Indian now summer farms. A a Andrew, <laughs> Andrew Indian summer garlic. Yeah. So it's, it's pretty cool. So you'll just let some grow out completely then, right? This raw let so that garlic raw let it bulb out. Yeah. So I have a full one there, and then way back yonder, you see the tops over, right there. over there. Yeah. I have one back there. So one of those two is your seed garlic for next season. The rest exactly. is harvested out. Exactly. Yeah. So Wanna check out a hoop house? Let's check it out. Let's do it. You're telling me you're adding one more a year. Every year we're adding a hoop house. That's my that's my goal. We yeah. just added this one here in the corner uh, about a month ago. This whole area is going to be my pepper block. Yo, look at this broad fork though. Yeah. What kind of broad fork is this? <laughs> Franken fork? <laughs> so, yeah, dude. So my father-in-law, um, <laughs> my father-in-law, he was at a estate sale in Ojai. He lives in Ojai. Yeah. And he came by this thing. And the guy was like, you know what it is? And he's like, yeah, of course I do. Yeah. And uh, the guy was like, since you know what it is, I'll sell it to you for 10 bucks. That's a deal. So. Cheapest broad fork I've ever heard of. <laughs> <He's> just, <Yeah. laughs> see, yeah, I try not to get the tines too far deep because you see how monstrous those things They're are. They're huge, dude. You know, so I go about halfway in and, and yeah. Because you're, you're broad forking and that's it, right? You're no, you're no till, no disturbance besides mm -hmm. that, right? Yeah, pretty yeah. much. Broad fork and raking. Yeah. So like these I just planted today. Yeah. These are the Sakuras. So these are going to be those long cherries. Um, they'll get trellised up on these little 
Wires this is where here. you're saying you go with a single leader because it's easier leaders. to pick. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let the tr trusses get nice and tall. But taut. there's space kind of yeah. close together, no? Yeah, I yeah. do a uh, hundred of them right here in the middle at yeah. about 18 inches apart, 18 inches on centers. Mm -hmm. Pretty tight, but works. It works. Clearly. Yeah. yeah. Well, I guess if you go single leader and trim them down, yeah, and you I, take all the suckers off after. Yeah. Exactly. Every week they get trimmed. So you're good. Every yeah. single week they get, you know, and these will probably go until about September, October. And you're selling all this stuff just at farmers markets. Yeah, just yeah. at the Little Little East Farmer's Market right now. That's it? Yeah. Only one? Only one. Oh, shoot. Yeah. Wait, why not anything up here? Um, not as much of a market? Not as much market. I'm building that structure over there. I'm yeah. actually, that one I was talking about where I was going to sell tomato starts and strawberry starts out of, we're going to be starting the farm stand out here too. Okay. So yeah. I'll be opening it up probably Wednesday when my daughter goes to daycare yeah. and then yeah, it makes sense. Um, start selling it here. Not Everyone I talk anywhere. to with, with the market farm thing, you, yours is so interesting to me because you figured out a way to do it with by, by yourself, so you're not incurring tons of labor costs, which is like almost always what people yeah, run into, yeah. but you've somehow also figured out how to do it without going 80, 100 hours a week, and just like, <laughs> that's your life, you live in the soil, you For know, sure. which is a really interesting blend. So what have you had to give up of like the classic market farmer best practices or whatever, like what have you had to not do? I mean, you can see out here, I keep things a little wild. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I like that kind of stand. I don't keep it super tip, tip top tight. Yeah. You know, I do let, things go a little bit. If there's areas I know I'm going to tarp, it's going to, going to let them go. And I think that type of stuff is, you're you not, know. you're not, you're doing it something if it's necessary. Exactly. Yeah. Only not if it's, not if it, you know. it looks good or whatever. Not that it doesn't look good right. to be clear, right. but just, you know, you, you do see those market farms where it's like, Pristine. There's, there's nothing, there's <laughs> yeah, nothing. You there's know. no weeds, yeah. but I, you know, I actually like some weeds, you know, because it's, rooted in the ground that's my whole motto is i want things covered i want roots in the ground i don't you know out here in this kind of arid climate if it's too empty it gets dusty it yeah. gets hot yeah. it gets you know so i kind of want some greenery it's kind of interesting and, the idea of just letting the you know, natural weeds creep through the pathways creep through the pathways because otherwise because you're going to trample them they'll they'll break down they'll, they'll die, die whatever so yeah. it's kind of nice right exactly and I'll, yeah. you know with something like these you just kind of just give it that little Just give touch. it a little dust and they'll be toast Yeah. after that. Especially you know? in this and heat, man. So we planted some peppers in here today. These are little habanados on the side. Oh, and nice. of course some lacionados. Yeah, I actually have starts going right now. I'm planting kale, chard, any of my like pole and bundle greens. I plant those every three to four months. Just, just to regardless. Keep it, just yeah. regardless. Just to keep a fresh batch yeah. going. Keep it nice and strong. Yeah. And then if an old batch does keep rocking and rolling, just you let just it rip. Let it rip. Yeah. Keep pulling. Keep rip. harvesting. Yeah. Boom. It's kind of that little insurance policy. As you know, just successioning everything. Why not? I you guess. Know? And that's yeah. what the whole thing was is like. Get this lettuce here. Kind of yeah, this, wild, is, huh? this is going to get all mowed out. So this was an example of frost damage. So these mm. were all lacionados. And this whole back area was planted with broccoli and lacionado. Yeah. And with that frost that came through just here two crushed. weeks ago, they yeah. smothered them. The coldest night, I, you know, I was like, oh, I'm not going to cover them. It's, you know, they'll be fine. Yeah. Of course. <laughs> One night I don't cover. So how did you start? You just look at this today and you're like, okay, this guy's on another level, you know. Obviously it didn't yeah. start out that way. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the first years, you know, you just start super small, yeah. super tight. Do what you can do managing. Um, you know, I worked a full-time uh, night job on yeah. top of that. So I came out here during the day, yeah. worked night, uh, made ends meets that way. Um, do you have to put like a down like a down payment on a lease or take out any loans or anything like that? Or? No, no loans. I don't do any loans. I don't want to put any pressure on me in terms of that way. Yeah. Everything was, if I didn't have the cash, I didn't buy it. Yeah. You know, um, you know, of course I could have all the fancy tools and this and that, but yeah, I just yeah. found what I needed and I went with it. And uh, and yeah, so I just kind of save super super low cost, keep my cost of production as low as I can, so I can sell things as mm -hmm. you know most profitable as you can. Good point. Um, yeah. Yeah, because you can you can price it however you want. However. Obviously the market bears what it bears, but are you, you know, able to be more competitive, I guess? Exactly, yeah. exactly. And have the margins a little bit tighter. And um, and the other thing is, is you know, like these hoop houses, you know, they I didn't, couldn't go out and buy them all at one time. Sure. You know? So every yeah. year I just keep adding, you keep adding. Yeah. This year I plan on adding an irrigation system. Every year I try to add an upgrade that's gonna take me yeah. to do less, yeah. if that makes sense. It reminds me when I like used to be addicted to like SimCity. Or yeah. something like that. Like every year, you get enough in the budget. Yep. You upgrade the roads. You upgrade the plumbing. <laughs> exactly. You know, whatever. What well, seems to be the yeah. next necessity. Yeah, you know? totally. And so it's like irrigation's next. You're saying, huh? Yeah, irrigation's yeah. next. Um, I spent a lot of time flipping the little dials. So that's my next thing is I want to automate it completely, and that way I could just 
leave for a couple of days. Yeah, wouldn't that be nice? Yeah. Dude, well, thanks for showing it to us. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad I got to come up here. Super inspiring, especially if you're watching, like, no, no debt, 30, no debt. 40 hours a week. Yep. Six figure business. Six figure business. Living out here, just chilling. Not chilling, sorry. Not chilling. <laughs> not, not chilling. You're right now we're chilling. Right now you're, we're chilling. I, I did exactly. not catch you on a on a chill day uh, <laughs> earlier today. But uh dude, no, it's, it's awesome. It's, it's really gratifying. Cool. I mean I could if I could encourage anybody to do it, I would. We need more small farms like this to oh, do yeah. it, you know. Thanks for having us, dude. Yeah, I really of course. appreciate Thanks it. Thanks for coming, okay. Yeah, of course. Indian summer farm guys, good luck in the garden and keep on growing. <laughs>